Welcome to Cat Chat, brought to you by Vangos, alongside Sean Kelly and Pete Francis. And Sean, the hockey team played at Bowling Green this weekend, and they didn't get quite the results they were looking for, but all in all, it wasn't a bad weekend. That's right, Pete. They did get some points, and that's really what they needed this on this crucial weekend, as uh, the CCHA is really uh, compact right now and clustered, and any points was good. Friday night, they did start off strong. They got a goal from Justin Florick and Phil Fox to open a 2 to nothing lead. And unfortunately, in the third, it was a turning point of the game where Andrew Chernichen got a five-minute major. And it's really been the, uh, the Achilles heel for this team this season is penalty minutes. And it came back to bite them as uh, they was, Bowling Green would score on a five-on-three. Then later on the power play as they evened it up at 2-2. Two to two. That would be your final as it went to a shootout where Bowling Green did pick up that extra point. The Cats only got one Friday night, but Saturday they respond nicely. They did stay out of the penalty box. They got two goals from Phil Fox who turned in a huge weekend. And they also got a game-winning goal from Gregor Hansen who continues to play strong here coming down the stretch. And they got three big points and they stayed out of the penalty box, which is the big story. Yeah, talk more about Phil Fox. He's really been stepping up lately. That's right, he has. And uh, this past weekend, they did play without their leading scorer, Tyler Gron, due to injury. So someone had to step up, and Phil Fox, the senior captain, has done, done so, as he has done very well through the whole season. He is now uh, in the top five of goal scoring so far this season. He's really been, you know, your unsung hero of this team, uh, carrying the, uh, the workload with the uh, departure of Mark Olver and Eric Gustafson. Now, after the weekend, Sean, the team moved up into sole possession of fifth and even has a chance to move into fourth this weekend. That's right. As I said, the uh, CCHA is really clustered tight together. It would have been nice to get a full six points, but right now they are sole possession of fifth with, four, with 39 points. Western Michigan has 41. Now, Western this week plays Notre Dame. NMU hosts Michigan, and then down the line, Alaska's done with CCHA play, so they're locked in with their points. Ferris plays Ohio State. That's a big series, and Lake State, not far behind, plays against Miami. So there's a lot of tight matchups going on this season, uh, this weekend, and it's going to be a big, big series, and hopefully the Wildcats can get some points against Michigan and, and uh, wrap up fourth or fifth place and get a first round bye. Yeah, Michigan coming to town will be a crucial series. How does NMU pull off the upset here? Well. I really think if they're going to make any headway moving it ahead in the standings, they have to win Friday and put pressure on the other teams like Ferris State and Lake State and Ohio State and, and Western, basically everyone else in there to win. And by doing so, they're going to have to stay out of the penalty box. Michigan has a very talented team. They're in the top 10 in the country. They're pretty much a solid lock for the NCAA tournament right now. So it would be a great place to see where Northern – really uh, lies against the top teams of the CCHA and it, it could be great momentum going into the playoffs knock off Michigan and who knows they could host a first round or host a second round game they're locked in to host a first round game no matter what right now if they don't get the first round by so it's going to be a big weekend they're going to stay out of the box get great goaltending and hopefully Tali Grant can come back and set the pace in, on the offense yeah it should be fun to watch all right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have highlights from Senior Day for the women's team and the men's team, so stay tuned. Attention Wildcat fans! Vangos, the longest-running pizza parlor in Marquette, is a proud supporter of Cat Chat. Located on 3rd Street, Vangos is your neighborhood bar and restaurant with takeout and delivery. Open seven days a week, Vangos specializes in only the freshest ingredients. From the dough to the pizza sauce made from scratch, Vangos uses the freshest vegetables for all pizzas, soups, salads, and specials, and has the best homemade food in town. Vangos, come taste the difference. I just saved $44 on three of my family's medications with the MKS Prescription Saving Card. Stop into your nearby Snyder Drug and start saving with the MKS Prescription Savings Plan. Hey Wildcat fans, for the latest news, updates, and online exclusives, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash NMU Cat Chat. 
Welcome back. Joining me now is Bryce Burge, and the men's basketball team had their home finale this weekend, so let's go to the highlights. Wildcats looking to finish strong at home. We'll get things started in the first half. Early on, it's Matt Craigs with the three-pointer, giving NMU a 10-8 lead. Still in the first half, Mylon Murphy with the nice move, and he'd finish with 14 on the day. However, Ashland goes into the half with a 44-38 lead. To the second half we go, it's Matt Craigs from downtown narrowing the gap to three. Later, it's more Craigs as he cans another one from long range. Then with a minute 32 to play and NMU down three, it's Craigs again from downtown and it's tied up at 68. Cats get a stop on defense and come back with the big cat, Jared Benson, to take the lead and the Wildcats hold on to get the win, 72-68. Bryce, great win for the team this weekend, and it was nice to see them go out on a high note in the home finale. Yes, it was a great way for the Wildcats to end, especially what happened on Thursday night. Uh, four Wildcats were able to score in double digits, Craggs, Murphy, Benson, and Martin Gross. Uh, Craggs also added eight boards, Murphy had a season high four blocks, and Gross had five assists, which doesn't really sound like a lot, but in the uh, Division II ball, that is a considerable number. Uh, but what really stood out to me was a solid defense, uh, especially near the end of the game. Ashland had some great opportunities to come in and tie up this game, push it towards overtime, and get this game a lot closer than what the 72-68 score said. But Wildcats defense were able to get some things settled down and uh, really paid off for them at the end of this game. Now, Bryce, Saturday was senior day for the women's team. Yes, they also won it well uh, as well, being the first time that the Wildcats uh, have both won on the men's and women's sides on the same day all year. Um, some good, good play overall, especially from Stephanie Stager, who scored 25 points to put her over the 1,000 career point total. Uh, unfortunately, on one aspect of it, the women's team was finally eliminated from playoff contention uh, with Tiffin's win over Ohio Dominican. So that kind of marked a little bit of a, of a sad day uh, or a sad motion on this senior day that celebrated five seniors. But as you can tell with this package here coming up that uh, they weren't too unhappy with how the game turned out. Ladies and gentlemen, As the last home games were played on Saturday, NMU took the opportunity to recognize their seniors. The women's basketball team was enough to end out the seniors' home games with a good note here for six players, with one extra in Krista Erickson, who played her last game last year in the round of 32 against Drury University. After an eligibility question and appeal that was unsuccessful, she was not honored at last year's activities, but was able to be honored here today, along with teammates Stephanie Steger, Kelly Rietfeld, Callie Youngman, Aaron Powers, and Jackie Davy. I thought today was a blast. Um, this team has really been just trying to play well together and play good basketball, and I think these last two home games have just been great for us as people, as individuals, and, you know, senior night is our last night on the floor, and, you know, together, but... It was a night that we came together as a team, and I think that's something that we'll remember more than any day. Another milestone also fell in the game as Stager's 21-point second half put her over 1,000 collegiate points. It's cool. I mean, I I don't think I would have ever imagine getting into college because I didn't in high school, but um, it's pretty it's pretty cool, and I'm glad I could do it at, in this jersey and represent the school. And, I don't know, I guess it's, uh, it's what you get when you have a good team, good teammates get me the ball and give me the ability to get a shot. So. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, I'll be joined by head men's basketball coach, Doug Lewis. Stay tuned. Attention Wildcat fans. Vango's, the longest-running pizza parlor in Marquette, is a proud supporter of Cat Chat. Located on 3rd Street, Vango's is your neighborhood bar and restaurant with takeout and delivery. Open seven days a week, Vango's specializes in only the freshest ingredients. From the dough to the pizza sauce made from scratch, Vango's uses the freshest vegetables for all pizzas, soups, salads, and specials, and has the best homemade food in town. Vango's, come taste the difference. Can't make the big game? Well, Cat Chat's got you covered with live updates from NMU Home Games on Twitter, 
Follow us today at twitter.com slash NMU Welcome back. Joining me now is head men's basketball coach, Doug Lewis. Coach, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, big win on Saturday. Talk about the way the team responded in the second half. You know, we've been struggling with tight ball games. Um, we're a young club. We're a team, you know, guys came, was back back from last year, you know, with the experience of losing. And, and it's been a situation where we didn't know how to close out games or make plays at the end of – of games and some of the earlier games, you know, I was really impressed and and satisfied that our guys really hung in there, tough, kept fighting and kept fighting. And I'm always preaching to our guys: if you fight, good things happen. And we made some plays down the, down the stretch and helped us win the ball game. Now, this has been kind of a transition year for the team with a new system in place. What would you say has been your biggest challenge as the coach this year, and what do you think your biggest challenge is going to be going forward? I think, you know, the biggest challenge, you know, when you come into a new program, you're trying to build the foundation of how, you know, your program is going to be ran for the next couple of years and just trying to get rid of the losing mentality, you know, where trying to get everybody on the same page, trying to make sure that guys play hard, guys play together, guys play as a team, play as one, and that's, that's been the biggest challenge this year is just trying to get everybody on the same page. And, and I think, you know, for the future, once we can establish that and, and, and that foundation is set, I think the wins, I know for a fact the wins will come. Now, what's been the biggest surprise coaching this team? Um, just the, 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 the losing mentality, you know, where the guys, you know, lose a game and it's not really a big deal and that's been established you know the last two or three years where they haven't won so everybody basically been playing for themselves and just changing that mindset has been a challenge but you know because you know I come from a winning situation this is uncharted waters for me so it's been a big surprise to see guys you know folded in at times and and I, I've been having to fight that all year and, and we're getting better now, with recruiting, I understand you can't comment on all the recruits until they've signed yet, but we do have a transfer coming in from Iowa State. Can you comment on him and how things have been going on the recruiting trip? Well, he's already here. He came in in December. He played, at, he played eight games for Iowa State. He was a JUCO All-American. Matter of fact, he's from my hometown, Demarcus Phillips. He's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin about three or four years ago. And um, he's going to, you know, he's really going to help us play the way we want to play. Very talented, a kid, great kid, good person. You know, we want to bring in good student athletes, but at the same time, we want we want to make sure they're good people and, and they are fit for our program. He, you know, he's very athletic. He can score, and and you know, we've been missing at the guard spot. You know, the guard spot. I think our leading guard is averaging like seven points a game. I, you know, this this would be a situation where he can come in instantly help Benson and Craig's and Mylon Murphy out. So it's going to be a really good fit for us. Now one thing you mentioned when you came to NMU was you're really impressed with the facilities here and that they were uh, a lot better than what you're used to. Do you think that has helped you in recruiting so oh, it's far? Been, it's been big. I mean, this is, you know, we have Division I facilities here and every recruit that I've brought on campus, we have two commitments so far. We have the kid transferring in from Iowa State, who, who has transferred in from Iowa State. And every time these kids come in, they can't believe how nice the facilities are for Division II. From our arena to our practice facility to even going in, in the dome, seeing a Division II team, football team playing in the dome. So it's, it's been a great help. Now, there's some solid talent coming in next season, plus there aren't any departing seniors. How much of a jump do you think this team can make next season? I think we can make a big jump. You know, um, like I said before, you know, the, the wins wasn't the most important thing this year. You know, it was, it was all about just building the foundation and changing the mindset of this team. With the guys, with majority of our guys coming back, adding some talent to this bunch, we can make a big jump. You know, they, it took basically our kids all year to learn the system, learn me as a coach, what I want, and understand how demanding I am. You know, we really push our kids, and I think going forth and going into the season next year, they have idea, plus adding some more talent, I mean some more talent, we can make a big jump. All right, now there's two road games coming up this weekend to close out the season. How does the team prepare to, for a strong finish? 
Well, I, yeah, the start was yesterday, you know, because Thursday was, you know, was a bad game. You know, I, I was truly embarrassed, and you know, I, like I said before, I apologize to the community and and our fans and students. You know, that is not how we're going to play here at Northern Michigan, the way we played Thursday night against Lake Erie. We did some things Friday where I got their attention, came out, played well Friday. And what we want to do is just, no matter the last two games, we're only going to take one game at a time, is to build on that. And that give us confidence going on the road. And these are two winnable games against Northwood and also Saginaw Valley State. So I look for our guys to come out with some confidence, play hard, and give us a chance to win. All right, it's time for five random questions. You ready? Yes. All right, best pump-up music? Best, um, who let the dogs out? <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you coach a sport other than basketball, what would it be? Football. All right. Who is your biggest influence in coaching? My, my high school coach, James Gordon, he's a legend in Wisconsin. He's in the Hall of Fame. He coached Latrell Sprewell. He's like 380 and 30 win losses, and he won three state championships. So it, that's who I look up to in basketball. All right, favorite thing to do away from the court? Um, I like to, to relax, work out, um, watch a lot of basketball games on TV. You know, pretty much that's my life is basketball. Okay, and favorite thing about living in the UP? Just how nice the people are. You know, I mean, very nice people. You know, I mean, you know, open, you know, just caring and, you know, friendly and, that, and the people, the people in the community. That's what I like about the UP. Coach Lewis, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, that's men's basketball coach Doug Lewis. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of the show. For the entire Cat Chat crew, I'm Pete Francis. Until next time, go Cats.